the way our robot works right now is it emits a little bit of light and then detects a certain amount of reflection. It does that on both sides and then it tries to balance the amount of reflection it detects on the right side with the left side so that the robot drives more or less straight down the hallway. It actually does this fairly well until it gets to the very end where it emits uh, some light out the right sensor but it doesn't get any light reflected back because there's no wall here. Whereas on the left side it's emitting light that does get reflected back and this value turns out to be a lot higher than the right hand side value. Since the robot's still trying to balance these two values it ends up veering a little bit to the right at the very end and we get this unfortunate situation where a robot's orientation is now not ideal. To prevent this from happening what we want to do is make our robot try to balance the readings it's getting from the left sensor and the right sensor only when two walls are present. Additionally, it would be really cool if our robot was smart enough to try and maintain a specific distance from, let's say, the left wall here, if it knew that there was only one wall, if, there, if it knew there was only the left wall here. To make that happen, we're going to go back to the beginning, before our robot's driven at all, and we are going to collect a little bit of information. We're going to emit some light and then detect how much is reflected. We'll do that with both sensors. We could do it with only one sensor, but if we can average these values, we'll get a slightly better number. And then we're going to store that into what I call the target value. The target value for the side sensors. So we're just, this is just going to be used to, to determine what amount of reflection we're going to try and maintain when a single wall exists. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our robot 90 degrees to the right. We're going to do this so that we can determine a threshold value for the side sensors. The threshold value is going to determine whether or not a wall exists. If we're above the threshold, then we're going to assume a wall exists, and if we're below the threshold, we will assume no wall exists. To get a good threshold value, we need to first detect how much light is coming into this left detector, because this is the uh, ambient amount of light that we, uh, we are probably going to see anywhere on the table. In order to get the best threshold value, we need to take the low value that we expect to see and average that with the high value. So the low value here is the ambient light and the high value is actually going to be the value we already recorded, that target value. That's when a wall is present. And If I average these two values, I come up with what that threshold value for the side sensor so that I can say if it's above it, it's probably a wall, it's probably high, it's probably a wall. If it's below the threshold, it's probably low, it's probably looking into an empty corridor. Once I have that value, I'm going to turn back down the hallway and I'm going to drive as I've always driven before. And when I get to the end of the corridor where there's an open wall, light's going to shoot out from here. Nothing's going to get reflected back. And this time the robot's going to deduce that because this detector's registering a value below the threshold value, there's no wall here. Whereas on the left hand side, it's going to emit light that gets reflected back and it's going to deduce that there is a wall over here and then it's going to try and maintain the amount of reflection it's getting from the the uh, left hand sensor and drive forward in a way that keeps that value constant with the result that at the end of the day our robot is still oriented correctly at the end of the hallway. So our goal is to use the forward proportional function a little more intelligently. Right now it uses information from both walls to try and drive straight, but if only one wall exists, then we only want to feed that function information from one wall to drive straight. To make this happen, we're going to create two new variables. The target side variable. This is going to help us govern the distance we try to maintain from a wall. And then the next variable is the threshold side variable. And this is going to help us determine whether a wall exists. 
if uh, the left to the right sensor picks up a value that's greater than this, it's probably getting a lot of reflection from a wall, and so we'll assume that a wall exists. However, if it's if either of those sensors is registering a value lower than this uh, value, then we're going to assume that it's not pointed at a wall, it's not getting a lot of reflection, no wall exists. Once we've added those two variables, the next step is to change the calibration function just a little bit. Uh, in order to understand what's happening here, we have to remember that we placed the robot in the middle of the cell pointing down a corridor and there's a wall on the left and the right side of the robot. So I'm going to say sensors.initialize and I could use either my left or the right sensor for this next step which is to set the target side value because both sensors will be registering values that are pretty close to the value I want to try and maintain. So I could say sensors.left or sensors.right. A better way to do this though is to actually average those two values because if I set the robot down and it's just a little bit to the left or to the right um, the, those values will be off but if I average them it'll be a little bit closer to the ideal value. The next step is to set the threshold value and to to do this I need to know the higher value that I would expect to see on one of those sensors and then the lower value and the lower value is going to occur when my robot turns 90 degrees to the right and then my left sensor is pointing down an empty corridor. So I can pull this off by saying threshold side is equal to the average of that higher value, the target side, with the reading from the left sensor. So this is the higher value I expect my robot to see when there is a wall. Here's the value I expect to see when there isn't a wall. Uh, if I can get the number that's in between those, then I can say if I register anything above that value, it's probably looking at a wall. If I see something below that average, then it's probably looking down an uh, empty hallway. And then I can make decisions about whether or not a wall exists. The next thing I'm going to do is create another function, and I'm going to call this one forward whiskers. The reason I'm calling it forward whiskers is because it's using feedback in the same way that a mouse or a cat would on a you know dark day or dark night to get information about its surroundings. So it's not just going forward, it's using its sensors um, kind of like whiskers. I actually already have the beginning of this function right up here. So I'm just going right to, right at the bottom of the setup function, I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to paste it right into forward whiskers. So the very first thing that happens inside forward whiskers is I sense. None of my functions will work unless my sensors are giving me uh, valid results and that only happens if I actually run this sense function. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see if there are walls on both sides of the robot. So I have to check the left side, sensors.left. Is that greater than the threshold value for the side sensors? And then I have to use an AND statement. And I do that by using two ampersands. So I'm saying if this func if this condition is true and the next condition is true, which is that the right sensor is also registering values that are greater than that threshold side variable. So both of these conditions need to be true, this one and this one. If that's the case, then I want to move forward. Uh, I want to use the forward proportional function as I always have. However, if the sensors dot right, if it's only the right sensor that is greater than, oh, I'm going to put an else if here actually. 
if it's only the right sensor that's greater than that threshold value, then I'm going to copy this same line of code But instead of feeding information from the left sensor, I'm going to throw in a dummy value. And that dummy value is my target side. This value doesn't change. So as the robot gets closer or further from that right wall, it's going to be comparing to that the, this previous average between the right and left walls. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a bit of a blunted difference. It's not going to change as much as it would if there were two walls. But it will change. And the robot will react. I'm going to do this pretty much almost the exact same thing here. For the left side of the robot. But I have to be really careful. Right here, I can't just change this to left. Uh, because this would give me the wrong sign. Uh, the sign does matter in this case. It affects whether the robot tries to correct it left or right. So it actually has to be that target side is in the front. And the uh, sensors.left is on the is behind or on the other side. Okay. And if none of this is the case then I just want my robot to move forward. Alright, now that I've created this function, I need to actually call it. So I'm going to go back up to the bottom of my setup, and after I calibrate, I'm going to run forward whiskers. And I'll go ahead and verify it real quick. Looks like I have one mistake because I forgot to put a semicolon here and here as well. Let's try that again. And looks like I need a semicolon here as well. Forgot my semicolons this time around. Here you can see the forward function in action. Nothing exceptional appears to be happening because everything's working so well. Our function is using reflection from both sides of the, the both walls to keep the robot pointed in the right direction. And when one wall no longer exists, it automatically switches to using the other wall. Here you can see the forward whiskers function in action again, this time with several walls removed. At the, at the beginning, our robot starts off a little bit out of alignment. And it doesn't correct itself because it tends to react more when it's close to a wall than when it's far away from a wall. But as soon as it gets close to this wall, it starts correcting itself so that at the end, our robot is aligned as we want.